should be good. All right, welcome everybody. This is Costa here along with our special uh, co-host guest tonight, Chris, on the other side. And we're here with one of the members of uh, Necronomicon, the Canadian Necronomicon, just to point that out to everybody who's a little lost. And we're here actually at Corona Bar. And uh, tonight is the, what we like to call uh, CG Lounge, uh, Lancement de la Pomme, with the Francophone out there. And uh, we're going to get a little personal up close with uh, the members of the Necronomicon. So thank you for having uh, being on the show with us. Hey, no appreciate it. Really happy to be here with you guys. Thank you. Um, to get things started, we want to know uh, the CD launch for the night. Yeah. How does this whole thing come about? Well, it's kind of like the typical like CD launch, like with, with a concert and everything. We wanted uh, we, we tried the Rise of the Element for this album. We tried to have like something a little different where people can like come talk with the band and just like to be casual. You know, that you, you can reach the people directly, you know, talk and ask questions, personal questions if you want. Get the CDs like on, on you know on the spot, get it signed. Of course, everything is cheaper than I. Than any other oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. And we have our sponsors here. You know, we have big guitars, you notice. We have pearl drums. We have Steve Musics that backing us there. We have our artists like uh, Philippe Ivanovic yeah. that's like exposing all these songs he's painting. We have like, you know, stuff for the people. We can have free beer. Uh, you know, it's, it's like really, and we're going to listen to metal. We're going to listen to the new album, of course. And, you know, that's that kind of stuff. You know, that what we're doing for the people. And we're doing for us too to have a good time with our fan lot here. So, so, so it's more of a really up close and personal with everybody. It's an up close, yeah, exactly. It's exactly, it's exactly the way we we'll see it. We did it for Rise of the Other One, and it went really, really well. So we said, hey, we're gonna do it again. Well, the new album did come out last week, right? Was that just? Uh, just a few days ago. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. No, all over the world? Or yeah, it's all over the world. Right now. So check that out. We'll talk about it more right now. Yeah, they get on the And Pro Prima is also one of the sponsors. I wanted to know how did your relationship with them start? Uh, well, that's quite it's been quite some years now. Pearl drums, I don't remember actually, because we were we were in the process to get to, to be in the middle of with uh, I think Pearl Yamaha and maybe another one. I'm not sure. It's been many years now. Many years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and when the time came to have like the brand my drummer, we said, you know what? I was I, I was working with that brand, but I always liked the sound of these drums on Pearl. I said, well, you know, we, we met the guy Reg from Pearl, and we said, we we'll contact him. We we'll contacted him. He said, the guys, let me watch some stuff. He said, I got the drum for you. It's a unique, unique piece. When you can see up, up close, it has skulls in it. There's only one like that. It's very beautiful. And I think there's two in the world. It's what I've been told. I don't know if it's true, but it's a really amazing. It's all birch shells. It sounds like thunder and lightning. We're, we're actually going to take a few big yeah, videos. Yeah, we can take pictures. It's, it's there for that, you know. I heard the sound of the, the soundtrack. Yeah. Now, when, when it comes to you know getting sponsorship deals with, with any type of music company, like, I mean, how much room is there, especially for some lesser known musicians, as opposed to like, high yeah, status? Yeah. I mean, is is that relationship very fluid? Is it do they listen to you more, or do you gotta listen to them? I, I think it depends on the relationship. I think it's different for everyone. So for example, when we get with Dean, it was a really when I got with Dean, it was a really weird situation because we were on tour and I got my guitar stolen, and I was playing another brand at the time, and the other brand they didn't they didn't like, oh well she had it, the kind that kind of attitude. Dean Guitar heard about the story and they approached us and they said, well we're gonna help you, and they they started to send guitars. To us. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how it started. And Mia was a wow. And they started to pay attention to us. They said, hey, you're touring a lot in the US. I said, yeah, we're touring in like New York State. So uh, we started to build something, and then now it's been like, uh, well, four, five, four, five years. Uh, and I like how this is going on there. We see the new one there with the skulls on it. I received it last week, brand new one. 
Uh, it's been done uh, just the last at the end of November. It's, I'm the first, per I'm the only person who ever played with it. Uh, yeah. Oui, bon, le bon, le bon. Les guitares sont là pour ce soir, non? Ils peuvent poser des questions. Euh, ça fait assez longtemps que je suis avec lui pour savoir. Euh, J'ai parlé beaucoup. Euh, euh, probablement que là, j'essaie euh, pour l'année prochaine d'être invité à NAM. Oh! Et il looks like it might, might happen. Okay. Okay. So we will see uh, how things go. Uh, these guitars are really. For rock and roll, metal, it's perfect guitars for that. Oh yeah, it's so versatile, and they have so much different kind of guitars. I mean, you need to play Dean. I mean, not not enough people play Dean. No, I'm in never played Dean. And I mean, you you need to play Dean. It's it's amazing. I'll try it. I'll never know what you're trying, right? Uh, get, get your wings today. Get your wings. Not Red Bull either. <laughs> Dean well, wings. Okay, so. On va commencer maintenant de parler un peu de l'album, euh, comme on a mentionné tantôt. It's been a little while that you guys have been promoting the album. Yeah. All right. Ah, uh, it's been a little while. So I'm pretty sure every journalist, every interviewer has asked you possibly a lot of the questions over and over. So this some first, classic. This some classic. All right. <laughs> so our first question about the album is, uh, how about you tell us something that nobody has touched upon the album that nobody knows? Something that nobody has talked about, that I've listened to the album three, four times, but still miss something. Wow, okay, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, first, there's no keyboard on the album. All right, you heard it here first. <laughs> you guys heard it. Heard it. The keyboards are so realistic, it's not keyboards. So what is give it? me a freaking break. It's samples. It's samples from real recording. Not uh, through loops? Not stuff like that, or no. actual? No, it's an actual, no, 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 it's not. Just like, loops? No, 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 it's like actual samples from people playing every note. Ooh, all right, okay, so, okay, so, all right, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. so good. it's some programs that you get, it's extremely expensive to do. You need to have the right programs to do that, and you have musicians in a professional studio. And you, you're gonna say, okay, you're gonna do that note. Nee, they do that note. They do it in like a staccato. Right, okay. get, uh, that way, then a vibrato. Then, you know. Okay. All right. And so there are actual notes. That yeah. Have for every musician, that I mean, for every track, every violin, every cello, every, someone did it. Yeah, so you can get that Yeah, we're fortunate to have contact with people who had that okay. in store. All right. You know? And usually when you go to a real, real studio that work with uh, soundtracks from movies or video games, they have access to that. They have access to that. But at the same time, we had to do the recording in multiple studios at the time. Because we, we were recording at Emory Street Studio in Montreal, downtown Montreal. Downtown Montreal yeah. Yeah. And we were recording there for the band, so G, Mars and Ray recording there. But for the incarceration, we needed to go to a place spe specific for that, so we were in the studio. And so I was finishing like for the, the, the production of the, the band, and I was going back to the other studio to work on the orchestration. So we, we had, it was, so it was kind of not that long because I was, it was really intense. So I was doing that like it's not, so it was like a black yeah, yeah. thing, right? And after that, the uh, album's been mixed in Dallas uh, at the GFP studio from uh, Calico. I saw that in the credits and we were like sitting there going, and, yeah. you know, you know how does that? So it, take three, it took uh, three studio to be there. Uh, so now you, you, you folks in your basement. Some actually, people know that, but the, yeah. some people know that because I, uh, people ask me, but a lot of people say it's keyboard, it's not keyboard. And see what you learn when you actually yeah. don't do it in the basement of your garage or your house. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, important thing in this is to uh, have like something that 
you, you, first you need to stay authentic to yourself. Exactly. So you need to do what you need to do. It's like do what you want to do and don't try to prevent yourself to do something you would, uh, you know, you say, oh, I won't do that because like this band and this band do it. No, do what you feel like doing. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, you need to, I, the people say, oh, you need, you don't, you try to do like this. No, I'm trying to, I'm doing what I want to do in my music. How, how I feel it. And that's, it's being true. Being true to yourself first. That's the most important thing. When you approach the writing process, be it the writing of the song, or the producing, or the engineering, um, as you come in to essay the the, the coaching they have, so there's a big deal, there's a big deal, the fan, the sort of follow. I mean, no, because I think that Negro has a touch that is very special to me. Même si on fait une catégorie avec certains groupes, on devait demander facilement. Euh, comme je dis, c'est important de, de, de voir les vrais fans de l'école. Quand on voit, on arrive avec le contexte, il y a beaucoup les vrais fans de monde qui nous suivent depuis longtemps, qui sont là, oui, ils disent la progression naturelle, ça fait qu'on entend la progression. Il n'y a personne à date. Okay, vraiment, qui ne nous suit pas le gars là, qui a acheté une fois un CD en 80. En 95, ils disent « Ah oh, ouais, mais vous sonnez différent, ouais, mais c'était en 95. » En 95, c'était en 95. On est en 2015, en 2016. Mais c'est ça, fait, les temps changent, les affaires changent, nos skills en tant que musiciens augmentent. C'est normal que ça évolue, ça change d'importance. C'est comme je disais, c'est d'être vrai envers ce moment-là. Parce que je me demandais ça, parce que euh, le nouveau album, disons, L'ancien album, I found the thrasher elements uh, were uh, oh, the last album, yeah. the new one and the one prior. I found they were more, not say dominant, but they, um, how, you, how would you say, more, more, uh, more prominent, rhythm. more, more up front. Okay, is this, is this, this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, the death metal aspects are still there, but you, you can hear it more and more, maybe not necessarily a progression. But they are more ambulation. Okay, okay. Is, is that by accident or I, I think like I said, I'm pretty much just doing what I, I what I feel and you know uh, I'm mostly like, I was talking with Nick because Nick today was taking care of the Evan. Uh, he asked me, he said for music, I said he said me I like that kind of metal, I said dude, I'm a I'm you know I'm I'm vintage. I like things from the 80s, you know, from the beginning of the nineties and I totally don't know what's I'm not aware of how what's happening in the world. It's been years, 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 years. C'était quand même la décennie où les chorus, ça sonnait, ça restait. C'est comme si je suis mauvais, c'est recipe. Je suis un peu vintage, c'est que c'est peut-être ça qui revient, les vieilles influences. C'est toujours ça. Ça se peut que ça soit ça. Je suis un très gros fan de King Diamond, mais on s'en trouvait. Ça, donc, ça me donne, c'est peut-être ça, aucune idée. Yeah. Oh, yes, I know where this is going. And uh, at that time, Russian metal was on the peak. Yeah. Heavy metal was on the peak. Glam rock was on the peak. How did you come across this personal decision? I wanted to get my metal. Actually, it didn't come with that metal because that metal was not existing. It was very early. When I was, uh, yeah. When, well, it's. It, the, it's, it was in the process of starting. Yeah, you know, it was and this, like that. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but I didn't know that. Because me, I was really focused on, uh, I wanted to have something really doom and dark and end up like something else. Something wrong. That was, I, I'm never going to say that is how it When I to make a theory end, I was like, oh shit. That's, that's, the way, that's what I want to do. But a little bit later, so trying because the first time I was composing music, there was no glass beat. Right. It was always really heavy, really ambient. And there's a band who changed out and it's a band called Napalm Death. Yeah. I heard uh, Napalm Death and I was like, whoa, shit, this is so crazy. Yeah, he's, he's crazy. So, so you know, even if I was a little bit more sloppy or less refined, or whatever, whatever you call it, I like the punch that they, they call the aggressive. And I said, if I can build something with this and the dark and go 
in between and it created Necronomica. So that's exactly how it happened. And after that, I discovered death on the jury, and around the same time that I started to do that. Yeah. In the 90s, later on, uh, you know, let, let's pick a number, it's all my mid 90s. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, tu as un aspect dans le site de Necronomicon où on peut dire, hey, je, je regarde, je vois, j'entends Immortal. C'est une adresse, tu penses un peu? Parce qu'il voulait savoir la décision avec uh, le make-up. Oh, actually, made, the makeup was there first. And we took off our makeup in the middle of the 90s. I heard uh, Yeah, because like... Uh, yeah, we had like... I was really... Actually, it was extremely vampiric at first. Now, Prince Blair had... It was like... A, it was really like something else. You know, we had like... You know, like big nails, like right. bracelets, and like... You know, really, really old school. Extremely old school. And our bass player at the time had like a white shirt with like, you know, the gothic, with, it was just a little bit of pale, and you know, it was just a little bit of white, it was not extreme like we do. So when, when we came to move in Montreal, around the same time we moved in Montreal, what happened? It's that when they started to have the problems with, uh, you know, the church burning and stuff like that, and some people started to point at us as troublemakers, and we wanted to dissociate ourselves from that, because we don't believe in that. I mean, I'm not Christian. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not Christian, we're not Seth. I'm not to uh, move through violence to make up the one. So for me, I was like, this other way, so we took off everything. So there, there's, you don't, you don't feel like accidentally or purposely, you don't feel like there is a scandal in that uh, For Marty, I don't know, because I, I, the first time I heard about, for example, Immortal, it was from. Uh, I know only one album. It's uh, it's the biggest album, Son of Mortal Greatness. It's the only song. Yeah, it's a very it's super so, sonic. Very so popular. I discovered that really late. Really late. Uh, the album was already out, yeah. and uh, since I was uh, one of the owner of BCI. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I was telling you guys about that. I was one of the, the, the guys who started BCI. Uh, we booked them. So I discovered uh, Immortal Day. And uh, Necronomicon was already Going around. All right, so we can always put those rumors and those questions. No, right? it's never been related to Immortal and any face or any other bands uh, at all. Because you think there's a lot of influence in the movement, the metal in Quebec, Canada, or whatever. Because Montreal, I felt ever since the 90s, no matter what was hot, no matter what was going on, mainstream or whatnot, there was always this death metal movement. I'm over there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at one point there was there was like shit blow up, uh, but what you do is a camera. Uh, sorry. Uh, I don't, uh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, at one point it was a lot of death metal, and, and I think we already stand up already where the battle was a little bit on the side. I mean, we can fit with that. We have some really death metal. But we had to, uh, I mean, we had to go against that a little bit because we were going there with a black look, really dark and windy, and people were like coming on stage with their band shirts and you know, really standard looking, death metal, typical death metal, and us who were like kind of the weird band. You know, they they kind of weird. They playing like kind of. Dark. Okay. And some people said, "Are oh, they trying to do like this side?" Some people were saying that at uh, the beginning of the nineties. People were saying that. Saying, no, no, we're not yeah, trying. Chris mentioned that as well. We're not trying to do this side. We're not trying to. Whatever. No, I mean it's okay. I mean because I, I, my biggest death metal influence. You want? You want? Yes. No, it's Voltron. <laughs> wow. It's Voltron. Oh, something new that I never. It's Voltor. Voltor was my favorite death metal band because it was so heavy. You remember I told you I like heavy stuff. Heavy, heavy, heavy. And it was a lot of groove, a lot of groove. And that was my favorite uh, death metal band. Yeah. I, I, I know, I know it, that it, it, so, it sounds weird, it, but it's, it's the truth. Every band, every band has an individual. Yep. With 
with the choice of doing things as you always see this you progress forward with basically how you want to do it. You still have a lot of questions because it's five minutes. Not too long. Penses-tu que vous pouvez aider le mouvement de cette méthode à moi? J'ai voulu aider au moment donné, on avait déjà essayé de faire une coalition. Et je ne veux pas pitcher le monde, mais à un moment donné, il y a du monde qui arrivait et qui voulait profiter. Euh, trop facilement d'arriver de dire « Hey, euh, toi, tu vas me faire signer, puis c'est comme ça. » C'est pas comme ça. Fait. Moi, j'ai fait un stade un de recul à mon année. Il y a tout le monde qui s'en vient de bitcher à cause de ça. Arrêtez, arrêtez de croire, il faut arrêter de croire que tu vas envoyer un CD ou une cassette. Euh, voilà, c'est une cassette. Un CD ou un... It doesn't work like that, guys. It doesn't work like that at all. You gotta work. You gotta it's work. It's so much work. It's so much work. I mean, and when you sit with people, you try. They ask you to. You, I would like you to help me. Okay, you're gonna do this. And they said, Are you kidding me? I said, No, I'm not. You need to do that. That was the only chance you have. And some people don't like it. No, so you step back. And then it's well, we want to take it again. Thank you very much for sitting here with us. We're gonna we're gonna do everything that we said. We'll uh, yeah. hang out with you guys. Yeah, the door is a They're in a bar tonight. The door open in five minutes. We got have some music, some beer, some stuff. And if you haven't checked out the Necronomicon Canadian music yet, go online. It's pretty much everywhere. This is uh, the Metal Syndicate, and we're signing off. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, no, it's not going to go anyway. Put this in the sacoles. The sacoles. That's Kato. Kato, bring them downstairs. Thank you.